Do you ever wonder what happened to your friends from high school? I mean, you were so close. You laughed together, you cried together, you shared some of the best years of your lives together. And yet, somehow through life, you just lost touch. Now it's time to relive those moments once again. Introducing the podcast that takes you back in time to the place where it all began. This is Class Reunion. We're bringing you all the gossip, secrets, and scandals from your high school days that you won't want to miss. Join us as we catch up with old classmates and dive into the wildest stories from our high school days. From those legendary parties to the infamous cliques, we're spilling all the tea on who's who and what really went down. So grab a seat, turn your volume up, and get ready for a trip down memory lane. Class Reunion, the podcast that reunites us all. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Class Reunion. As we talked about last week, this will be part two to the story with Teresa Wilson Flores on human trafficking. It does come with a trigger warning as we have just reached the pinnacle of her story. For those of you who didn't join last week or want a recap, we will begin this episode with doing so to get you up to speed where her story leaves off. A reminder, though, that this does come with a ending that she turned around her life to be the voice for others. Teresa Flores, warrior, vigilante, advocate. Let us continue. He just started talking to me, started kissing, and then I felt really woozy, like really, really dizzy. He kept like, you know, coming on to me and I kept saying, no, 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 pushing him off and didn't really have much control. And so, you know. The next day you were handed an envelope. Right. Yep. And it was full of pictures. I found out later his two cousins who went to school with us had taken while this was happening. He's like, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. I didn't know this was going to happen, but they want you to earn them back. And I was so naive again. I was like, you know me, like do their homework, wash their car. I didn't know what he meant. And so just to repeat that, you, earning back meant to get those photos back in your possession and not be mm-hmm. used against you. You were going to do have whatever to- they said. On the drive home with those officers, did yeah. they ask you what had happened? They did, and I didn't say anything. I was in such shock. Like, okay. I'm sitting in soaking wet pajamas. I've just been drugged and beaten and raped, you know, multiple times. And they're not seeing the signs <laughs> of, like, trying to probe or... Yeah, I did. They did. But I was like, after what I had gone through, Mm -hmm. I was not talking. But you know, and like people have a hard time believing that. But like today, you know, the police officer would have come and they would have taken me straight to the hospital. Right. And they would have done a rape kit and all that stuff. But right. And they didn't do that. No, uh -uh. no, no. I mean, you could also, I'm equating this to drunk driving. But remember, like, if you got pulled over back then, they were like, how, how, how close are you to home? Right, right. Nobody got really involved in anybody's business. Nope. Nope. And and not to put anything on top of this, but they also don't know you. And and is this what you wanted to do? And is this right? You know, I think there was still probably at that time period, just as much blame on the victim. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, right? she snuck out. She's just a bad right. kid, you know, uh, partying, whoring around, whatever. Right. And, right. and I let them believe that. Like, that's what my parents believed that happened that night. And I didn't tell them any different. Because so this I did knew. Not... Oh, oh, go ahead. Sorry. I just, I knew, especially after having been auctioned off, like all of these guys' threats from the past year and a half would come true. Like, if they're going to do this. Yeah. What else aren't they going to do? Now the shit's hitting the fan. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so, but this wasn't the catalyst to your family knowing everything or was it? No, no, not at all. No, because I I know. I said nothing. I mean, and even like the police officer asked to speak to me alone. And so my parents went and made coffee. And he's like, I know who's behind this. And he's like, but then he said, I need you to help me catch them. Well, sure. And I was like, no, not going to do it. You know, if he had said, I know who's behind this and I want to help you get out of it. Totally different. Totally, totally different. But he didn't. So it's the way he he worded his offering of help. Yeah. And I wanted to ask you that. That brings up another question. Obviously, I I don't personally think you were the first for these folks because it seems like it's such a well-oiled machine. Yep, exactly. Well, I guess whether you were or you weren't is irrelevant. But if they were familiar means this is something that's why I think there was more than even just you. Yeah. The the police knew what was going on. Yes. 
And and I think that, I mean, these guys were obviously involved in more than just, if you want to call it trafficking or prostitution of minors, you know what I mean? Like, um, which is trafficking. But I think that they were also involved in money laundering and drugs okay. and, you know, I mean, not drugs mm-hmm. but so much as maybe guns and stuff. So mm-hmm. I could mm-hmm. definitely see, um, and I've researched that group um, yep. even later and been told by a lot of FBI that there was a lot of that going on. And so, um, so in, w- amongst other criminal activities. Okay. So they were on their, their radar in general. Yes. Well, yeah, I think so. So can we explore your family when it really became, or do you, do you just want to leave that part out? I'm, I'm curious of when they started to understand the whole story. Oh, it wasn't until, so we, my dad miraculously got moved, we got moved again right Right. after junior year in 1982. Uh, I was so happy and we moved, you know, like I said, to Connecticut and I just wanted to start over. I just wanted to be Teresa Wilson, you know, the virgin again and nothing had ever happened and just did that. And so it wasn't until after college that I actually told my parents a little bit about what had happened. Cause my mom made some comment about like, well, you know how you used to like those guys that, you know, at Groves. And I was like, let me tell you, that is not really what it was. And so I told them a little bit about it and, you know, by then it was too late to do anything about it. I'm speechless. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, and, and again, uh, they are from a different generation, so Absolutely. I'm not, I'm not yeah, here to, yeah. you know, I've got some stories too, but not like that. But um, everything you've done to this point of your advocacy, which I do want to now get into mm-hmm. how the SOAP project was developed, was there ever, I, I guess I'm just blown away, like where was the connection of how severe everything was? And and did your brothers start to have a different level of compassion, like, or is it still mm-hmm. kind of funky? You know, everybody deals with right. things differently. Right. Yeah. Um, it was interesting because my brother Patrick, um, wrote a chapter in the book as well about the things he was experiencing from these guys. Um, cause he went to the same high school. And so, and, and I never knew that, like, I never knew that they were pressuring him. They were, they were threatening him and he never knew what was really going on with me. Like he knew something, but I don't, none of them, none of my brothers knew I was sneaking out at night. And so, it, yeah, it was interesting, the dynamics of how far that the these guys' threats um, went to. I mean, and I think even to the teachers. So uh, so uh, what she's referring to is um, in 2013, Teresa wrote a book called The Slave Across the Street, uh, which I will also link from Amazon or any, any store um, Audible. But um, how did that come about? So you did the TED Talk in 2011. And like you said, did these Mm -hmm. things just start to snowball where you were given opportunities to have a voice? Yeah. So I, as soon as I put all the pieces together, I also learned that there were hardly any survivors speaking about it, let alone ones that looked like me that had lived a privileged life. Yeah. Um, And so, and there were really no laws against it either. Um, So I decided to lend my voice to the senators and representatives in Ohio and in Michigan and um, say, hey, you know, I'll testify because I think these senators and representatives and, you know, are, that are sitting there making these decisions, they'll respond to my story and they'll, you know, because I look like them and mm-hmm. as horrible as that is, right? You used what you could to get yeah. the story out. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, laws started getting changed and um, yeah, I know, I know. And I even, you know, have a, na- a law named after me in Michigan. It's called the Teresa Flores Law. And so um, it makes me feel really good to be able to help and change can laws. You, what, what does that mean? What What is the... Yeah. So Senator Judy Emmons in Michigan, she had met with me and asked me what I think needs to happen to change. And so... We, she came, put together a package of 22 different um, bills that she wanted passed. And one of them that was the most special to me was the one that ended up getting called by name. And it was, it removed the statue of limitations for kids that are being trafficked in Michigan. Michigan's the only state that has this. So when I finally told my parents, we could have picked up the phone and called and said, we want to prosecute these guys. But we couldn't because the statute of limitations was over for rape, for, you know, all of these other things. 
And so, and even at that time, I didn't know what human trafficking was. So right. now if you're a kid and you're being trafficked in Michigan, you have until you're hundred years old to go and, and go back and get them. Which is another thing that I was curious about and respected you not needing to make that part of your story, but yeah. um, the fact that they are left out of your yeah. ending um, yeah. without any repercussions, yeah. how but, have yeah. you been able to reconcile that? And yeah. what I, it's a two part question. So that, because the fact that you are so vocal now in creating change, it's almost like you're, I gotcha in a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um, <laughs> still, how did you also realize there's nothing you could do? Yeah. And, and do you have like this, you have to let that go to some degree, but how you do. do you, how do you do that, Teresa? By doing what I do now. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm okay with that, that, you know, one of them, I still know where he lives in the Michigan area, you mm -hmm. know, two of them because of the people on the, our alumni site have said, Oh, you know, let's check out these obituaries and two of them are no longer here. And so, you know, <laughs> Right. It's a so, little bit of Taylor Swift. Uh, I don't know, but, uh, <laughs> I'm okay with that. Um, and it's funny because when I do my talks, um, uh, it's so interesting to see the men that are in the audience. They'll come up to me and be like, do you have their names? Like yeah. I can take care we of this at dawn, for you. Right? We yeah, ride yeah, yeah. at dawn. Yeah, and I was like, hmm, as tempting as it is, I can't justify that. So really, I'm, I've, and I've come to terms that like, you know, there's no amount of what I could do to them legally. Yeah. God will take care of what needs to be done, you know? And so I, I just let my faith take care of it. And then really doing this work is what my, is how my justice has come through. So by, by helping prevent hopefully other teenagers from this happening, mm -hmm. from helping survivors even older than I am to help them heal. Mm -hmm. um, and by give them a voice the that they didn't <laughs> yeah. have back then either. And rescuing these missing kids during our Super Bowls and our Detroit outreaches. I mean, all of that, like what I do now has, is what my justice looks like. That's a beautiful way to look at it. And it's why I have such admiration for you. Oh, and I, I, I do want to read the book fully. I read mm -hmm. bits of it, you know, cause I, I yeah. just found out about it when I was researching you that you wrote that. And that had to have been, also cathartic. And I love that your yes. brother contributed to it because yeah. that's an important part of your healing as well. Yeah. And I also don't know if I want this answer, but I want to ask the question. Did this also bring about other students from Groves participating? What, what so a lot of times they took you to other locations, but was it ever inclusive of young boys at Groves? Like It was inclusive to this group. Okay. So this Figure so those they didn't three. have a party where. No, no, it okay. was no, it's completely. I call it kind of an underground, you know, gang type of a situation. Okay. So it was these three guys at school, and then their, you know, older brothers and uncles and stuff were all, um, yeah. Okay. It, it was not with any other. Um, and I don't know why, it meant, but it, like yeah. I'm just thinking back, like, gosh, I wonder if there's any regret right. from you know, because those boys too, outside of the cult, outside of right. the group, if it was right. some kids at school, could have also just been in part of that whole. Sure, no, pressure they were, you as know, well. the, the those. I just feel like when I look back, everything was really secluded. Yeah. Like, or not oh, secluded, for sure. that's the wrong name, but like, um, you know, the Jewish hidden. kids stayed with the Jewish kids yes. and the Chaldeans stayed with the Chaldeans. And so yes. there yes. wasn't yes. a lot, at least in my head, there yes. wasn't a lot of uh, intermingling. Crossover. Yeah. 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 Except in the Jewish community, like you said, I went to they so many bar, bar and bat mitzvahs. I felt like I could recite <laughs> yeah. the Torah. It was a lot of fun. Was, yeah. I actually, great. one of the, one, some <laughs> Jewish guy there at, at Groves, he went to homecoming with me. So yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. very good group. Yeah. So yeah. Um, with this terrible, we're going to take the, the, the ending here of, of um, some horrible situations and you turned it into an amazing project that I want to mm -hmm. highlight. So nice. I'll leave that information as well. Um, but with this situation, you somehow rose up and said, I'm, I'm going to do this soap project. And, mm -hmm. um, I just, for listeners that are listening, um, on a streaming service, but those of you that see me on YouTube, I'm wearing a red shirt mm -hmm. specifically for Teresa to honor her soap project. And you mm -hmm. have a t-shirt on as I well. <laughs> and so I love what you're doing with this. And I would love for you to take some time to talk about the soap project. 
Yeah, thanks. I love how it got started. Um, I had been speaking for several years across the country, and I I had just kind of made an agreement with God that um, I'll do this. I will you know, leave my full-time job. I'm a single mom with three kids and I'll do this because it's what I'm supposed to do, but I'm not going to ever do this in Michigan. <laughs> it was like my, my, like, I'm never going back again. And, uh, but I kept meeting survivors from Michigan. I kept getting calls about speaking there. And I was like, oh my God, I just, I need to do it. And so mm -hmm. I decided um, my first speaking engagement in Michigan was at Gross Point at the Yacht Club. So I was like, hey, you know, it can't be much worse than that, right. you know? <laughs> so, um, so I went up there and it was a uh, Theroptimist and Zonta. They're two women's uh, uh, civic groups and felt so much love and support. And I was like, okay, I got this. Mm -hmm. And they're like, it's late. You know, you want to spend the night? We'll get you a hotel room. I'm like, I don't sleep in hotel rooms in Michigan. And so mm -hmm. I um, drove, I was driving home to Columbus, Ohio, where I live three hours, not a big deal. And I got lost. And I started seeing towns, you know, the names on the signs for Southfield and all. And I was just freaking out. And I lost it. I just... I lost it. And then I like in that ugly, from a post-traumatic stress, just so people uh, get what you're, what you're talking I about. It's like crying, it and back I was not crying. It yeah. did. It was big trigger, you know, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. if I don't find my way home, like mm -hmm. I'm going to end up there. And mm -hmm. yeah, it was bad. And so I reached out to God and just said, please help me. You know, I'll do anything to get me out of here. And, um, I realized at that moment, thinking back to that moment of laying in that motel room, right? Like there's still lots of treasas laying in those hotel rooms, those motels and even more now. And I'm like, how do we help her? Like prevent her from being there. Like she doesn't know there's a hotline number now. There wasn't that when I was being trafficked. I didn't even know it was trafficking. There was, and I just wanted somebody to talk to that would understand. And so I thought, wow, you know, maybe we can get these motels and hotels, that hotline number, put it on something that she could see in the in the bathroom, maybe, and that she could call for help. So that moment of just pure trauma and ugly cry, um, leaving Detroit, or just something beautiful was born. And I decided that's what we we're going to do because so many audiences, when I go and speak, were like, oh my God, this is horrible. What can I do? Right. Like, how can I help fix this? And I'm like, I don't know. Don't right. go to strip clubs. Don't, you know, watch pornography and pray about it. Donate money. I don't know. But then I thought this, I could help people help me with this. And so um, that way it was born. By and trying soap, to get out soap of stands for? Save our adolescents from prostitution. Because I have a feeling that like the people, the police officer or the waitress or whoever, you know, even if people at school saw this happening, they probably would have thought this was prostitution. And it really wasn't. It was mm -hmm. really, you know, trafficking. Um, and so people didn't know. It looked like one thing on the outside, but it really wasn't that. So that's why I decided to call it soap. And we put labels with the hotline number on them and on bars of soap. On, and, and it's red, which is why it's red. red. It's, yeah. Yeah. Yep. And we hand them out to thousands, tens of thousands of hotels and motels, along with missing children posters, because a lot of these kids are runaways and missing. Mm -hmm. And like, say, if my parents would have gone to my bedroom that night, they would have seen I wasn't there. Mm -hmm. So they would have been like, oh, she's missing. So mm -hmm. um, so we put their pictures and we give them that to the hotels to, to post and have found many, many young girls during these outreaches. And also your locations are very key. So mm -hmm. um, I believe even again, this year, you're going to do Super Bowl yeah. locations. Yeah. Yeah. So you're strategic about like the auto show, yep. Super Bowl, yep. events like that, that draw this type of activity, right. which is so smart, mm -hmm. because it right. doesn't have to necessarily be at a Holiday Inn and by Disney World necessarily, but right. you're right. picking locations that are key. And have you seen an uptick in people calling since you've done this soap project? Oh yeah. Um, the calls to the hotline double anytime that we're doing an actual outreach. So I, yeah, it's great. And it could be just people with tips. It could be people interested in wanting to learn more. Um, we don't know that for sure that it's a, a, a traffic person calling, but it's okay. So we've had a group from Northridge church, which is in Plymouth, Michigan, go to the surrounding area to do soap. 
and um, they were waiting to talk to the front desk clerk. I think they were in Warren and they were waiting and they had the missing children's poster in their hand and they look over and there's one of the girls on the poster is standing there. Is my favorite story. And so they're like, come outside. And they're like, Teresa, what do I do? And I was like, call the police right now. And so they, bless their hearts, stayed there, called the police. They got her and another 15-year-old out of there. This trafficker, this pimp, had rented five rooms um, that he got arrested. And then they got subpoenaed to go and testify. And he's in prison now. So... Oh, it was just, yeah. Yeah, this is where your redemption is far exceeding oh, yeah. just that group. It's, it's, you've got to feel some yeah. enormous pride for being the Teresa's of the world and giving them a voice. Hey, sorry for the interruption, but I need to say attention all alumni. Are you ready to relive the glory days and reunite with your classmates? Look no further than myevent.com the ultimate destination for planning unforgettable class reunions. With myevent.com, you're in control. Upload photos, upload event details, and connect with your classmates. Spread the word on social media and watch the excitement grow. Myevent.com brings your past, present, and future together in one unforgettable event. Start planning your class reunion now. Myevent.com, your reunion, your way. All right, let's get back to the show. And 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 I want to go back to the, the ugly part of soap, which was you really knew that they were there to clean up. Yeah. It was it was something that you yeah. wanted to put in a hotel room because it's where women go to clean yeah. up. Right. So they're being watched. They're being they've got the you know their phone, their pimp, their traffic, which is the same thing as a trafficker. Mm-hmm. They are watching everything, but after each man. She's allowed to go to the bathroom, shut the door and clean up to wait for the next man. And so I thought, you know, where would I have seen this a phone number? Like it wasn't in the Bible. I wasn't reading the Bible back there. Like, where would I have seen this? And it would have been in the bathroom. And so I'm like, what would I mean? A lot of these places, they don't have shampoo and conditioner, but they no. all have to have soap. Cause no, it's, it's not all of beta products in a, no, no, in a no, motel. No. Yeah. 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 So it's like, it has to be the soap because they have to have it. So well, we're going to share ways to get involved in that program to continue yeah. to help support you. Thanks. What I would like to do is move to where you, where your story also continues on as an adult. You mentioned being a single parent of three mm-hmm. children. Um, how did all of this affect your ability to, get into relationships? How do you Mm. move on with that and have it be part of your partner's story? But I don't even know how you go on and move on from there. Um, You know, I, I think part of the reason I am still searching for relationships because I wanted to be loved. I wanted to be a mom. I wanted to be a wife, like in my, my culture and my religion, that was really important. And, and you I never wavered that. in your faith. That was where I also no, wanted to never. Be. Yeah. You never that, that's, that's the one thing that like kept me alive and kept okay. me, you know, going. So I still searched out for relationships and stuff, even though I obviously wouldn't have trusted any man, but I just wanted to be loved so badly and, mm-hmm. um, but was really broken, really, really broken, obviously. And I didn't feel that I was worthy of, of, you know, a relationship or, you know, being loved. And so I, I became very promiscuous in college because that was my foundation, right? Like I didn't know you could say no. Yeah. Like, oh, wow. And this is so. And you um, also think this is, this is what I deserve. This is what I, yeah. So So I started drinking a lot and, you Mm -hmm. know, and so college was really tough on me when I moved back to Indiana and went to Ball State. I, I started to, you know, started to heal myself and, and get better and uh, was in a, a good, healthy relationship that ended when we graduated. Uh, and then when I was in grad school, met somebody, but it became a very, and we got married very quickly, but it became a very domestic violence really, uh, marriage uh, for 10 years. It was very abusive because that's what I thought, you know, I deserved. Like when he said, let's get married, Not like, will you marry me? But like, let's get married. I thought this is as best as I'm ever going to get. I'll never going to get. You have to listen to my proposal story. Uh, (laughs) Mine was, was, do you wanna? Do you wanna? (laughs) And of course, I'm like crying, going, yes, it's the most (laughs) romantic thing I've ever heard. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. 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 So, um, was in that for 10 years, had my three babies and did um, anyone know, like your family know that he was, Yes, they knew that he was abusive and, okay. you know, not so much physically, but definitely financially, emotionally, mm-hmm. you know, all it's all that. forms. Yeah. 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 So, um, uh, after about 10 years, I decided I I've had enough and, um, divorced him, left him. And then that started my healing journey of, you know, worthiness and, and loving myself. And mm-hmm. so, yeah. And how do your children handle it today? So it's interesting. They all help me with the soap project. I'm married. I've been married to my, my new husband for nine years now. And mm-hmm. 2014, I believe. August yeah. 16th. He's, That's when I got married. Yep. Okay. He came into my life is the moment I started doing this. So he's been with me the whole time. Okay. And, and so it's been wonderful. It's, it was hard in the beginning talking to the kids, uh, you know, about my story. I didn't want to share that ugliness with them and, you know, um, and so when they come with me to soap outreaches and I share my story, um, they kind of go outside the room, you know, and they, they have good boundaries on what they can and can't hear. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a documentary and I know they haven't watched, they've watched parts of it cause they're in it, but it's difficult. You know, you're the mom, you don't want to talk about sex and rape yeah. and stuff like that with your kids. So, but, but they've also- been very supportive. It's also why you are probably raising them the way you were as well. Mm-hmm. So there's reasons behind you sure. talking about sex the way you do and in yeah. preventative and being in a relationship and your self-worth. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm sure it's yeah. pieced together of why you parent the way you do today. Yeah, absolutely. You know, talking, Where's your documentary? Um, it's on Amazon. Is it, I think it's on, yeah, it's on Amazon. It's on, oh, um, Prime, mm-hmm. Amazon Prime. Uh, it is called The Girl Next Door, but you have to put Teresa Flores because there's some really bad ones named The Girl Next Door. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's like a 23-minute documentary that's won a bunch of awards, and it's a really uh, oh my a, great, gosh. a great little story, short. And did your husband that you married in 2014, did he have any children as well that he brought no. to marriage? Or? No, okay, he so had never been nice married. To- and, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was fresh start. So and just being your partner. Enjoy. Yeah, he's my rock. He definitely, you know, and I'm like, let's go do this. He's like, no, let's calm down, you know. And so, um, yeah, he's he's been everything to help me do this. And my kids, you know, and my brothers, even like my whole family has really come together to support me on this. That's what I was going to ask if there was yeah. closure on family dynamics, you know, absolutely, of, um, yeah. which you deserve wholeheartedly. Thanks. And so you've worked at this most of the time in your life or was there a time that you were in a different career or what was your uh, I was a social worker for about 25 years I saw years. that credentials yeah. I didn't so know I but, did yeah. a lot of pregnant teenagers and uh, met medically fragile babies so I did that for a long time and really um, really loved that I always knew I wanted to be a social worker and actually yeah. when I first when I had moved to Connecticut I decided I wanted to be a school counselor because I wanted to be there because the school counselors missed it. And Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. one of my favorite things to do is talk to school counselors and and school nurses. Um, So I get for signs, right? Things to look for. Yeah. Yeah. I was sick all the time. I, you know, I didn't want to go to school, obviously. And, you know, had headaches and stomach aches, which is typical and people missed it. So, so if there's something that I missed that this is your, your forum. And again, I feel Mm -hmm. privileged to have this time with you today. So I don't take it lightly. I don't want there to be anything left unsaid that you maybe want to share about your experience or human Mm -hmm. trafficking in general. Like yeah. I want this to be left with number one, we're going to leave a lot of things available for people to get mm-hmm. involved, but yeah. there must be something that you just want to have as a final statement of, of how important this discussion is. And it's, it was part of your past, but it's still going on today. And I want to yeah. leave you with that opportunity to say whatever you feel you want to say. Thanks. You know, this is the first time that I've even written my made a name out and for people to see the first time I've talked to a classmate about what happened when I went to school there. I've been, you know, back to Southfield and Birmingham and spoken at a few small events there. And even that's just super hard. But I just want everybody to know, like people have reached out to me and just said, I'm sorry. Like if we would have known this was happening, we would have helped you. Mm-hmm. And, and that means the world to me. 
I know that I was really good at hiding it because I had to be, but I just wish that, that somebody would have done something, you know, people will say like, Oh my God, I, you know, these guys were abusive to other people too. Um, they've, I've heard, you know, things like, well, we, we thought stuff was going on, but we didn't know. And so, and it's not to make anybody feel bad, but like, if you see the signs of something like this, you know, speak out about it. And even if like you were to say to me, Hey, Teresa, are you really okay? Like, you know, and I would have said, Oh, I'm fine. But like, and you still feel like something's going on with her, you know, like, don't let it go. And when I talk to kids at college and high schools, that's what I, I say. Like, if someone's making you do something you don't want to do, you know, find somebody, just one person that you can tell. Uh, we just we need to get better at this because it is way worse now than what it was when I was going through it. I, I think I was just in the beginning you know, now because of cell phones and the internet and sexting and pressures, it's, I mean, probably a hundred times worse now than it was when I was going through it. So do I wish people would have seen the signs and, and helped me? Absolutely. Um, but I get to do this now and I wouldn't trade that for anything. Whew. I know. <laughs> well, I would have said something, and um, I'm sorry that I wasn't privy to any of this, so I wrap you in a hug from me, but this has been amazing Thanks. that you are making a difference in giving a voice to other women, so, you know, that's the biggest hug you could, you could give to um, anybody else out there, so Thanks. I feel beyond privileged to have your time today, and I will continue to support you and you're just an amazing, incredible person. And I thank you so much for sharing your story today. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for giving my voice a platform. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, um, until next time, class reunion, I hope you found value in Teresa's story and uh, we'll continue to support her in her soap project. And I uh, thank you very much. So mm -hmm. we will stay in touch and I thank you. All right, friends, that's it for this episode of Class Reunion Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. And if you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to the show, write us a review, and share this podcast with a friend. Until next time.